On today's Ding and Corners, we are talking about injuries as the playoff races are heating up in the ending week of the baseball season. So sit back, relax, and enjoy today's Ding and Corners. Before we get into the video today, I wanted to talk to you about Dinging Corners, the Instagram page. So we just started at Slab Stocks. We just started a Instagram page for Dinging Corners. It's going to be both a podcast and an Instagram page now. And this is where you can go for all your baseball knowledge. If you like the Slab Stocks content, but you want it just for baseball, you don't want to see soccer you don't or football, you don't want to see basketball. You just want to see baseball content every day. This is where you can come, dinging corners, and you can go here and you can see we had our first post yesterday on Christian Hernandez and Victor Acosta, and we are trying to put up a post a day, sometimes too, if we can swing it, and it will be a good place for you to talk about the hobby, talk about baseball, discuss baseball, debate baseball, and also DM me if you want and then also, something I'm looking to try to do is if you have an idea for a question, send it my way or be like, hey, can you compare X player to X player? Send me a couple images of the cards and uh, I'll make a post for you or at least make a story um, if it's really good. Sometimes, you know, questions aren't very good um, and that happens. I have not very good questions myself. And so, uh, you know, if it's a good question, we'll put it up there. We'll get it out there and we will get your questions asked to people that like baseball just like you. I think it'll be a good way to uh, crowdsource and a good community um, if I can be so bold. So please, if you are watching this and you like Ding Corners, the podcast, please go follow Ding Corners, the Instagram page, and join me on my journey to provide baseball content for all of you. Thank you, guys. Now on to the podcast. Welcome, everyone, to Dinging Corners, a baseball podcast powered by Slab Stocks. I'm your host, Nate, and we've got injuries. Not a ton of injuries, not a ton of injuries, but we've got some major ones. We've got some minor ones, and we're going to talk about them today in relation to other players that might see playing time in their stead. The reason I thought about this was because I'm sure if you guys were on Twitter yesterday, you would have seen a million people talking about walls and not Taylor Walls from the Rays, but walls that you shouldn't punch if you're Devin Williams. Devin Williams, the Brewers reliever, him of the 2.50 ERA, the rookie of the year last year, the unhittable changeup, celebrated a little bit too hard, got a little bit too angry. And then punched a wall with his pitching hand and is now out for the playoffs for the Brewers. The Brewers lose their setup man for the playoffs right after clinching the division. A major, major, major blow on one of the years where the Brewers actually have a good chance of contending because their pitching is so good. We just lost one of our best pitchers. And so we are going to be talking about that at the very end. But before that, we've got a lot of other guys to talk about. Now, remember, when we're talking about these injuries, some of these guys are probably going to make it back. So, you know, whatever we talk about today might not be true by the time the playoffs start, might not be true by the middle of the playoffs. But there is potential when one guy goes down, there's potential for another guy. So let's get into it. So, September injuries. Number one on the list is Nick Anderson. Now, Nick Anderson should be back before the end of the season. Um, he came back. He got injured. Not before the end of the season. Before the, the end of the playoffs. He should be back. Now, will he be back? 
I don't know. And so that's why we're talking about him because Nick Anderson should be their setup man. JP Fire isn't probably their closer. So he should be their setup man. Maybe their closer if he was completely healthy, but he's not. And so if he doesn't come back, expect one of these guys to get his setup man role. Now, the reason that's important is because all three of these guys are starters right now, along with Shane McClanahan, Michael Waka, and Ryan Yarborough. Um, Shane Bass has had a couple starts on the year. Luis Patino is getting starts. And even Drew Rasmussen, who you remember in, is from the Willie Adamas trade, even he's getting starts. The Brewers never started him. He had two Tommy John surgeries in college before even get, getting drafted. But now they are having him start. And uh, honestly, he's probably been their best starter in the last couple weeks. He only goes about four innings a game, so he's probably more of an opener. But knowing the Rays, that might be enough. They throw him for four innings as long as they know they're going to get a good four innings out of him. And then they move on to a bullpen game. And so he might be their starter. And I expect Michael Walker and Ryan Yarbrough to be their starters, despite the fact that they're bad. They have experience in the playoffs. They're not rookies. Shane McClanahan, Luis Patino, Shane Baz, and Drew Rasmussen are all rookies this year. Every single one of them. I imagine they're only going to run into the playoffs with two rookies in their rotation. And so for me, um, one of them, Shane McClanahan already, and then Ryan Yarbrough, Michael Waka, they're going to need a fourth starter. And so it's going to be one of these guys, Shane Baz, Luis Patino, and Drew Rasmussen. I wouldn't be able to tell you which way they go, but that means that two of these guys are going to be competing for Nick Anderson's eighth inning spot. Seventh inning spot, but major, major innings in the bullpen, which is not as good as the starting rotation. If you're going to be in the starting rotation, you want to be in the starting rotation. That's the way to get your prices increased. But if you're not going to make the starting rotation, you really want to have a quality spot in the bullpen for people to start paying attention to you. And so one of these guys, and you'll look at Shane Bass as Bowman Chrome's $50. Uh, Luis Patino's Bowman Chrome's $25, and Drew Asmussen, Topps Chrome Refractor, fifteen auto $15. And so one of these guys is probably going to end up in the rotation, and two of these guys are going to end up in the bullpen. And I wouldn't be able to tell you which way it goes. I want Shane Baz to end up in the rotation. That would be ideal. I don't know if they do that for a rookie that has like two, three starts under his belt. But keep in mind... There's some interesting dynamics at work here with a bunch of young pitchers on the race. Number two is Zach Grinke. And the reason Zach Grinke is interesting is because he hurt his neck. He only had two starts in September. He hurt his neck. Since that point, he came back and, uh, he, you know, he didn't look right. And so they're putting him potentially in the bullpen. Now, the reason that's interesting is because, well, he has a 4.11 ERA and he's not nearly as good as the other starters. He's like their fifth best starter. When you have a veteran like this making a ton of money who's been there before, I feel like teams are usually like, yeah, we're going to put him in the spot. And because of that, you know, somebody like a Luis Garcia, rookie of the year candidate, might get left off the starting rotation and put into the bullpen. Because Zach Grinke might be put into the bullpen. A Luis Garcia now guaranteed gets to start in the postseason, I'm guessing uh, um, he 144 innings, 3.30 ERA. He's been really good. I'm guessing because Zach Grinke, they're going to be more trusting to put a rookie like Luis Garcia in the rotation, which is huge, 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 huge for people that like to invest in pitchers. You get a Luis Garcia out there. You get him pitching in front of everyone in the playoffs. And all of a sudden, Orange Otto of one of the top rookie of the year candidates going for $100 is going to go for a lot more. This Topps Chrome Orange Auto went for $99.85 plus $11.77 shipping. So Zach Rinke going to the bullpen because of injury can open the door for somebody like Luis Garcia. Jamison Tyon. And so Jamison Tyon, he hurt his ankle, I believe, um, dealing with ankle injury all year, comes back, deals with another ankle injury, is expected to miss some time in the playoffs. Now, the reason this is important is because he was slated to be, so it's Garrett Cole, it's Corey Kluber, and it's Jordan Montgomery. 
Those are their three starters. After that, uh, Nestor Cortez is probably their fourth starter, but Jamison Tyon was probably going to take his spot. Uh, Nestor Cortez now slots back into the starting rotation. And you can see here, September 21st, Tops Chrome Update Sapphire from Nestor, $6.50. That's super cheap. If you have a guy like Nestor Cortez go out and have one good game in the playoffs, this is the type of card that people like to overreact on and, you know, buy it for 10, 12 bucks. If it's sitting there on best offer, buy it now because they don't want to miss out and they just want one right away. And uh, we'll have more on that later, um, that exact point. But, you know, Nestor Cortez now slots into the rotation. There's potential there. There's potential there because Jamison Tyon cannot get that ankle healthy. And so when we're looking at all these injuries, you know, it seems doom and gloom. It seemed doom and gloom for Devin Williams. And the whole reason I'm doing this is because it seemed doom and gloom for Devin Williams. And I thought about it more. And I thought about Aaron Ashby, who we're also going to be talking about later on. Brandon Belt. Now, I don't have any guys to pinpoint for the Giants. The Giants are like a... Um, all your guys combined make one really good team as opposed to a bunch of guys individually being really good, right? They've got a ton of guys. And so Brandon Belt going down, having a career year, a uh, fractured thumb is a huge, huge blow. I don't have like a young guy to pinpoint being like, hey, he's going to go off because he's going to get this chance now. But instead, the Giants are probably going to go Donovan Solano and... Uh, Duggar and Dickerson and all these guys are going to get some time. Wilmer Flores, you know, all these guys are going to get some time at first base and you can't really pinpoint it who's going to get it. And so Brandon Belt is a major injury and I wanted to bring him up, but it's unlikely that his injury specifically leads to a young guy getting more time, getting some spotlight and making you more money in the card market. And so the Giants are one of those weird teams where, they don't really have a ton of young guys. They don't have a ton of prospects playing right now. Um, and so for me, Brandon Bell injury, well, really, really too bad for the Giants and really too bad for Brandon Belt. Not going to have a huge effect on the card market. And then lastly, our last guy was Devin Williams, and I brought him up earlier. He punched a wall. He broke his hand. He's out for the playoffs. An idiot. And I'm sitting there, and I'm reading this, and I'm devastated. I said it before. The Brewers only have so many chances to make the World Series. And in a year where your pitching is really good and your bullpen is really good, I'm feeling a lot more confident in that. But if you take away a Devin Williams and his 2.50 ERA in 54 innings or whatever it was, 51 innings, and all of a sudden in a five-game series with two off days, you could probably pitch in all five games, and that's taking away five innings. Maybe he doesn't pitch in all five, he pitches in four, or he pitches in three. Or maybe he pitches two innings in three of the five games with a game off between each. Whatever it is, you're taking away probably four, five, six innings out of the bullpen from Devin Williams. And that's a big blow when there's only so many innings that you have to win in the playoffs to win a World Series. Losing those innings in just one, one round, and then the next round, and then the next round, is a huge blow. We're talking 18 to 20 innings probably that you have to cover by somebody else. And usually, usually, teams aren't going to have a guy like a Devin Williams to put in there to cover for Devin Williams. Now, the Brewers are in a unique situation. They have really good starters, good starters that can go deep, six, seven innings. You go six, seven innings, and you cover with a uh, Brad Boxberger and a Josh Hader, um, and a Jake Cousins and stuff, you're good. But the guy I want to talk about is Aaron Ashby. Now, I am currently going for the Aaron Ashby Bowman Chrome Auto Rainbow. I'm not going to have enough money to do it, but I'm buying up Aaron Ashby Bowman Chrome Autos in an attempt to at least get close on the rainbow. So, take everything I say here and remember that I own a bunch of Aaron Ashby Bowman Chrome Autos. He's a Brewers pitcher. I love the Brewers. He's a stud. He's going to be really good. And he's really good. Last night, and we'll show his card, last night Aaron Ashby was called on in the eighth inning, Devin Williams' spot, and then in the ninth inning, and he went 
zero hits, five strikeouts out of the six outs he got against the Cardinals. So it was really impressive. And that's the nice thing about the Brewers is that they have an Aaron Ashby to put in there. And it's nice for me because Aaron Ashby is now going to get that spotlight in the playoffs. As long as he does well, I should do well, right? So that's where my mind went when I was like, I'm devastated about Devin Williams. Then all of a sudden I was like, wait a second. If Devin Williams is injured, that means Aaron Ashby is probably going to get called up to the eighth inning. And this could be good for me. And so that's why I did this entire exercise so that you would be like, oh, you know, doom and gloom. All right, not doom and gloom. Now, the last point I want to bring up is that Aaron Ashby did throw two innings, five strikeouts, zero hits last night. You'll notice that on September 29th, September 29th, which was last night, $35 on a Mojo Auto, buy it now, and $45 on a lot of four purple Mojo um, so like, you know, $11 a piece, $11 and 25 cents a piece. This is what happens when a guy comes up, a, a Cortez in Ashby, you know, a Shane Bass, anybody like that, and has one good game, five strikeouts and two innings. People overreact. They need to get their hands on it right away. They want to beat the throngs to the card. And so they go on, they find the first buy it now of something that looks interesting, an auto or a numbered card in this case, and they buy it and they overpay. If you would have waited for these cards to go on auction, you could have gotten it for probably half price. But they didn't, they overpaid. So if you're sitting there and you have these cards and you're like, all right, my guy's going to get a chance to play. And if he does well, I want to be ready to capitalize. Put your cards up for a reasonable best offer you know, a little bit more than what they would go for on auction. And probably if they do well, somebody's going to see that and have to buy it. That's just how people work. So for me, I'm sitting on Aaron Ashby. I'm probably going to list some. If people want to buy it after he does well in the postseason or gets spotlight, good. I'll sell. I'll buy back into the offseason. And you can do the same thing with all of these guys because of these injuries and their ability to be opportune and take advantage of the injuries that have happened ahead of them and take their places. That is all I have for Dinging Corners today. Um, Again, remember, I have a bunch of Aaron Ashby, so please, please, please don't go buy Aaron Ashby. This isn't a buy Aaron Ashby. This is a, you know, this is why I found myself making this video is because this exact situation and how it affects me and how these situations could affect you. So instead of looking at the doom and gloom of the picture of a Devin Williams being injured or a Brandon Belt being injured, you know, try to find that silver lining and try to find that next guy up that could be valuable in the card market. Thank you, everyone, for listening to today's Ding Corners, and I will talk to you guys again next time.